Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. We're a little more than a year out before the official kickoff to Campaign 12, the race for the White House. In the next few months, we'll begin to see the standard political coverage by the mainstream media as they handicap and rate and score the potential GOP challengers to Obama. What we will not see in any substantive manner is the discussion of Obama and his buffoonery. In going on three years, he has offered no leadership in the area of economics. In fact, the country is nearing a financial and economic disaster point that he can't lie about or simply ignore anymore. With debt downgrades looming on the horizon and serious deliberations about how to avoid a default on the debt, America's economy looks bleak. No job creation, trillions in debt. Does anyone even know how to count that high? unserviceable debt for decades into the future. If the country were a family, it would have long since been on welfare and food stamps by now. Not much better is Obama's foreign policy. Zero leadership on the world stage, a laughingstock in European and Asian capitals, and a military policy that looks eerily similar to the one he excoriated George Bush on three years ago. So, he has no ability to offer leadership in the area of economics, foreign policy, or other duties of the executive branch, like enforcing existing laws, which is the reason he's president. But in the area of social policy, he has smashed one pitch after another over the center field fence for the liberals. And this is why you will hear nothing bad about Obama from his adorers in the mainstream press come about a year or so from now. He protects their sacred cows of abortion and homosexual sex. No man has single-handedly done more to destroy the morals of this nation than Barack Obama. Oh, granted, he's had a lot of help, but the entire constellation of moral and social evil has collapsed into his star. He has fought mightily to ensure that abortion, homosexuality, and embryonic stem cell research reach their zenith on his watch. These are all intrinsic evils, every one of them which makes a small piece of news leaking out of the American bishops' headquarters very alarming. In 2008, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops issued its annual whitewash document on why it's okay to vote for a pro-abortion candidate, using vague language and dodgy interpretations that at the end of the day mean essentially you can vote for a pro-abortion candidate. The liberal bishops, with an undying love for the Democratic Party, and they know which ones they are, make sure that this faithful citizenship document says nothing at all. Well, fast forward to the next election cycle. Word on the street is that when they meet this coming November in Baltimore, they're going to leave the document essentially untouched and unchanged. Oh sure, a little tweak here and a nip and tuck there, but at the end of the day, the large number of bishops who simply cannot tear themselves away from their democratic leanings will use, or should we say abuse, what little moral authority they still enjoy, and tell us all with a straight face that Obama is okay to vote for, only it will be in all that coded church speak, you know, the type they are so good at. If you read it, it means vote for Obama. If I read it, it means don't vote for Obama. And that's exactly the way so many, not all, but not enough, U.S. bishops like to run their candy store. They talk about being obedient, yet many of them simply disobey the Pope and the Magisterium. They talk a great game, some of them, when it comes to orthodoxy, but in private they viciously attack orthodox Catholics. A handful put on the appearance of caring about the faith, but their actions and decisions show anything but a care for the souls in their charge. So, how can it be surprising that when it comes to helping Catholics understand that voting for a candidate like Obama and his obsession with intrinsic evils should not be done, that they once again produce a document that will once again give cover to a majority of Catholics to vote for this same man. At some point, a reasonable person has to begin to wonder things like, are they, these guys, really opposed to all or some of these intrinsic evils, or are they just pretending to be so they can look orthodox and get a promotion? Another question that comes to mind is this. Since programs run by the USCCB get so many tens of millions of dollars from their Democratic lawmaker chums, could it be a case of not biting the hand that feeds them? These questions, and many more, come to mind. 
but they're all driven by the simple fact, and it is a fact, that every time the election rolls around, the USCCB produces a useless document that says absolutely nothing while giving a wink and a nod to voting for politicians who support intrinsic evils. Who's kidding who here? Just come out and say that you want Obama to win so the status quo stays exactly how it is. Enough with all the highfalutin ecclesiastical finery and chatter. Obama's your man. He was in 2008 and he will be again in 2012. Meanwhile, the faithful Catholic crowd will reach back to 2008 and vote for something with great fondness, and that will be change. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Please help us keep delivering these kinds of messages that so desperately need to be heard and acted on. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber. Become immersed in the faith established by Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church is the only hope against evil because that is its God-given mission. As our Lord said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber and come to learn and love Christ more deeply.